to the Establishing a Quality Management System for your Legal Practice course. My name is Kelly and I'll be your instructor for the next 60 minutes. Now this course is divided into three parts. The first part provides an introduction to quality management systems, which are often referred to as QMS, and will cover the basic components of an effective QMS system, as well as some of the benefits that it can offer to you in your legal practice, specifically in the context of your risk management strategies and efforts. The second part of the course dives a bit more into the pragmatic components of actually building a quality management system for your legal practice and provides an exp explanation of some of the key terms which are often used interchangeably but actually mean really distinct um, things. And then finally, the third and final part of the course provides some strategies for how to strengthen uh, your legal practices quality management system if you perhaps already have one in place, including how to introduce robust training mechanisms and support programs for your staff, as well as some other suggestions such as implementing routine audits and embracing some best practices uh, by um, just sort of embracing a few uh, tried and tested tips. And welcome to the Risk Tolerance and Entrepreneurial Law Firm course. My name is Kelly and I'll be your instructor for the next 60 minutes. Now this course is divided into three parts. The first part provides an overview of entrepreneurship in the legal services industry and takes a look at some of the more earlier and perhaps well-known entrepreneurs in the legal field who emerged in the United States in the 1970s and 1980s, and then moves on to explore some of the more current trends that we've been seeing in legal entrepreneurship, and also unpacks some of the factors that we should be considering when, it look, when we look at the nature of legal services into the field. Following from that, the second part of the course looks more closely at some of the risks that are associated or inherent in legal enterprise. And it does this by looking at two key case studies that um, emerged from the United States. The first one is LegalZoom Incorporated. And when we look at that case study, we look specifically at how it defended against some of the claims that arose against, arose against it regarding the, um, or alleging the unlawful practice of law within specific jurisdictions in the United States. And the second case study deals with Pangea III and looks at some of the risks that are inherent or associated with alternative legal service providers or ALSPs as they are coming. Finally, the third and final part of the course speaks more broadly about risk management considerations for legal entrepreneurs, specifically the types of legal risks that you should consider as a, lot, as a legal entrepreneur, as well as um, some tips for developing an enterprise risk management system um, for your business idea. Hello, I'm Gillian Carrington and I'm here to talk to you today about the process of change management for lawyers. Why should you watch this course? Well, change is a factor um, in everyday business life. Um, they say that we're living through the fourth industrial revolution. Um, change is uh, something that lawyers are traditionally bad at dealing with. Uh, they prefer established practices and they don't like the risk aspects of change. This course will take you through uh, the risks and benefits around change. It will take you through some of the established business models for dealing with change. Uh, and it will uh, conclude with reference to legal practice today. Um, to the changes that are uh, in the pipeline for law firms and uh, it will also address the question of specific case scenarios for lawyers. So, change is here, change is good, let's lean in and I hope you enjoy the course.